Okay, so I guess if you're watching us, um, we are starting now. So, yep. Um, okay, first of all, welcome to everyone. Uh, this is our first seminar in another reality. Uh, well, in fact, our first events uh, in the Matrix, aka NEOS. <laughs> um, so my name is Gene. I'm on the committee of the Oxford AI Society. And uh, uh, basically, I'm just going to quickly go over the plan today uh, and then do a very quick introduction to our society. And I think next time we'll uh, give a quick speech about NEOS. Uh, then we can, we can kick off. So basically, we've got three speakers today. Um, the first one is Joseph Suarez from MIT. He is the creator of Neural MMO. Uh, it's something that he did while he worked at OpenAI. And then uh, Carol is going to speak. He's the co-founder of NEOS. And uh, he's going to talk about the history of VR and the vision for NEOS. And then finally, we've got our own uh, Ox AI's chief technical officer, Guillermo Vaje. He will speak about one of our perhaps most ambitious research projects that we'll probably ever take on, uh, is to instill perhaps in AI some of our humanity. And so, yeah, what is OxAI? Uh, we're a student-led society at the University of Oxford. Um, we started about three and a half years ago, uh, as, as you can imagine, a drinking society, basically. <laughs> we literally were founded in a pub. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to say that in, in, in four years' time, uh, we've really outgrown our initial ambition. We have over 1,000 members now, and uh, we mostly focus on four uh, initiatives. So, it, okay, I could change the slide here. Oops. Sorry. Okay, I'll tell, I'm just going to speak. Yes. A little bit of type mode function. Um, so, uh, we have four pillars uh, education. Uh, research, community, and careers. I'm not going to go into the detail on um, education and careers because we haven't got much time. Uh, Joseph got a plane to catch for Thanksgiving. Uh, but basically, uh, is our mission to build a community in Oxford, London region uh, to get people to collaborate uh, in AI, whether they're domain experts or uh, between various groups of machine learning AI research groups. And we have, on top of that, we have our own uh, research groups. Uh, right now, we've got about 18 research members, mostly PhD students, and a couple of undergrads as well. Okay, we'll, we can tell you more on the details. So, yeah, that's about OxAI. So I guess I'll pass on to next slide. Yeah, um, let me unmute my microphone. <laughs> Right, right now, I really would. I, I, I'll talk more about Neos and uh, what's going to be happening with with this sort of research. But I would actually like to pass it on to J Square right now because he is having to catch a flight. So I really would like him to be able to have out his presentation, and then I can uh, discuss afterwards about the uh, technical side of Neos and what is going to be happening with it and why I think it's an amazing VR project. So let me give it off to J Square. Thanks, Nex. No problem, man. Much appreciated. And I will be joining all of you on Twitch uh, remotely as soon as I'm on my commute to the airport. Just get myself set up here. All right, everything look good on your end? Yeah, do our boss. All right, yeah. let's get started then. And, Hi, and, and I'm Joseph. Also be sure to um, put the uh, video as well once you get that set yeah. up as well. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, I forgot to yeah, change sorry, the material. Thank you very much. Out. No problem, man. Here, uh, let's just do that. Oops. Make 
sure I get the right one. There we go. Right, in any event, we good? Okay, I'm Joseph, and my background is, is in embodied intelligence, which is a term we often use at MIT to encompass reinforcement learning, neuroevolution, some robotics, and generally just any setting where we're discussing the intelligence of an agent or of many agents. And today I'll be discussing my main project, Neural MMO. My fundamental goal here is to provide a setting for general research on multi-agent and social intelligence that is useful at a variety of computation scales. This is a large ongoing project, and many people have contributed over its lifespan, over the last two years, that is. But for today, just to say, my words are my own. I'm not here representing OpenAI, MIT, any of my previous collaborators, or any of my current collaborators, just myself. And disclaimers aside, let's dive in. First, I'll discuss Neural MMO as a game environment and discuss the motivations and its current capabilities. Second, I'll discuss several much more technical research results in multi-agent systems and research engineering surrounding the platform. Much of embodied intelligence relies on simulated games as research tasks, and for good reason. Games are easily accessible, straightforward to evaluate, and immediately interpretable. To date, others have demonstrated success on arcade games, first-person shooters, real-time strategies, and massive online battle arenas. However, MMOs have gone relatively untouched. Neural MMO is a massively multi-agent game environment that is heavily inspired by MMOs such as these. MMOs are persistent environments that operate over months to years. They require long and short-term strategizing that is socially dependent, competitive and collaborative, and constantly adapting based on an emerging virtual economy and a shared player knowledge base. My underlying hypothesis is that this structure enables MMOs to provide a style of learning that closely mirrors that of the real world, much more closely than that of any game genre studied to date. This is what the environment looks like. I make no claim that this is yet a full MMO. That will require much more work. However, it does capture two core properties of MMOs that are important to learning and that are not well modeled by other environments. The task is persistent. We never reset the environment during training. And second, it supports a large and variable number of agents. Everything that is built on top of that is simply there to make the persistence more meaningful and agent-to-agent -agent interactions more engaging. To this end, Neural MMO has three core game systems, resources, combat, and progression, which I will go into in great detail. Under the resource system, agents must learn to forge effectively in order to survive. Agents do this by tracking three stats, health, food, and water, which are just rendered as uh, panels overhead. If they, uh, they consume food and water on every game tick, and if they run out of either, they start losing health, and if they run out of health, they die. Fairly typical game design. Agents re restore food by occupying resource tiles, denoted by the foliage tiles here, and they restore water by moving adjacent to these water tiles. Um, and if agents are well stocked on resources, they also slowly start healing health. This is built upon by the combat system, under which nearby agents can attack each other with three different combat styles, which, for flavor, I refer to as mage, range, and melee. These have different accuracies, damage values, different effective ranges, and sometimes other special properties. So mage attacks, for instance, also freeze the target in place. This system introduces a significant strategic layer when combined with foraging. For instance, agents that are better at navigating than fighting can seek less occupied portions of this map using mage defensively to freeze would-be attackers in place as they retreat. On the other hand, agents better at combat can learn to freeze targets in place first and then close distance for more damaging melee attacks. The progression system has hey, combat and forging together over potentially long gameplay sessions. Players in actual MMOs improve their strategies and mechanics over time, but they also gain numerical advantages through stats and equipment. Neural MMO implements persistent MMO-style skill levels in an AI environment. Agents that forge for food and water will gain experience in the associated skills hunting and fishing. This panel up here summarizes that information. Uh, and if agents uh, gain levels in forging, in forging and uh, collecting water, hunting and fishing, then they'll be able to gain more food and water from each respective resource tile, as well as increase their maximum food and water capacities, which will enable them to take longer treks across resource-poor regions of the map and strategize on a longer time horizon. 
Similarly, the combat skills here are Constitution, Defense, Melee, Range, and Mage. So, this in under this system, agents with high Constitution and Defense have higher health and reduce the accuracy of opponents' attacks, where agents with higher offensive skills are more accurate and deal more damage. Taken together, this progression system allows further specialization and strategizing within the game environment. Agents with high foraging can take attackers on a wild goose chase, running them out of their lower resource supplies, while agents with higher combat can specialize in the different combat styles, learning to kite their opponents to maintain favorable engagement ranges, or using the terrain to their advantage to corner more foraging-centric agents. All in all, these systems combine to provide a reasonably complex environment with important aspects of persistent learning, socially relevant strategizing, and short and long-term trading uh, learning trade-offs. The maps themselves The maps themselves are procedurally generated by thresholding Pearl and Ridge Fractals. In our experiments, we use the smaller map on the left, which has roughly uniform resource distributions. However, the generation code is easy to tweak and amenable to much harder tasks. For instance, just by manually fitting a few curves to the resource distributions, I've generated this map on the right, which is resource poor with simple terrain in the center and resource rich with complex terrain as you get farther out. So learning in this setting would require agents to learn a progressing curricula of terrain difficulty in order to explore effectively. All right, thank you for your patience. Hopefully I've given you some sense of where the environment is now. It's time for a little video demo. Here's some policies. First, a random baseline. Random policy fully untrained. Notice how few agents there are. This is because I'm spawning in agents at a constant rate and they're mostly just walking into lava. Next, a trained policy. Here, uh, I've trained a policy with simply six CPU cores, very small scale, bare minimum algorithmic complexity, bare minimum of network size. However, agents are already exhibiting reasonable forging and combat patterns. So if we look at a couple agents and what they're doing, they're interacting with the various skilling systems, they're gaining levels in the combat system here. I believe this agent over here, if we take a look, Maybe one more agent. This one's also interacting with the combat system. And I believe in a second here, we'll see one that's interacting with the foraging system. There we go. Gaining levels there. So they're already interacting with the various systems in the world. You can see lots of agents engaging in combat, engaging in various foraging patterns, already doing reasonably sophisticated things. Now, one additional note on this. While capturing this video, I noticed one agent with uh, some particularly interesting behaviors. So just while I was recording this video, I noticed, there we go, this agent here. So this is a stat panel, and the stats here, in particular, 21 fishing, 22 hunting, and then the various combat stats correspond to more than doubled resource capacities and more than doubled uh, offensive outputs. So this would give this agent significant advantages over the competition and introduce a new dynamic for the other agents in the environment. All right, that concludes the environment description. Let's shift the research and engineering work that's completed in association with environment development. Neural MMO is built from the ground up for research, and it includes a number of visualization tools directly in the client. For example, you can examine the learn value function uh, directly in the client, as well as the agent exploration maps as overlays. Note that I'm still porting some of this functionality to the latest client version, but it will all be there soon. During my time at OpenAI, we observed some interesting developments on the 1.0 version of the environment. First, larger agent populations explore more. We refer to this property as a multi-agent auto curricula. Given the same task, one agent will just go to the nearest food source and run back and forth between the nearest water. But in larger populations, the task becomes outcompeting other agents rather than the environment. With some conditions, this produces an easy-to-learn setting whereby agents need only discover one small trick or strategy improvement in order to gain the upper hand. So here, as we go from 1 to 8 to 32 to 128 agents, as these are overlays of the map, we see they explore much more. The second result is that of niche formation. When agents are sampled from many policies with unshared weights, they actually naturally attempt to avoid other populations. 
The reasoning is simple. Agents cannot avoid members of their own population, as they all have the same policy, but they can specialize to a region of the, of the map that is unoccupied by other agents. This brings us to the technical multi-agent systems portion of this talk, where I'm going to go into much more detail for those who are interested in two specific aspects or two problems on this environment. The first is I.O., that is, how do agents perceive the world and take actions accordingly? We could just render the environment and learn over... Oops, I think that one's uh, advanced itself. Give me a second here. Okay, there we go. So how do agents perceive the world and take actions accordingly? We could just render the environment and learn over raw clicks and key presses, but rendering is extremely computationally expensive, as is learning from raw pixels. I also don't know of any mainstream work that has successfully learned over raw keyboard and mouse inputs in a complicated game setting with only simulated self-play data. In contrast, NeuralMMO provides local game state observations. Uh, this is the set of all nearby entities, attributes and tiles. Uh, uh, here, this is the set of all nearby entities, so for this agent, it's this Sorry, other agent girl. here, any agents close by, and then all the nearby tiles that you can see on the game map. And then for each of these objects or entities, you have the associated attributes. So agents, you can see their health, food, and water, etc. And tiles, you can see their material and then their relative position and whatnot. Agents have to process this information and submit action argument pairs, such as moving in a direction or attacking a target with a particular style. Now this process is very complicated compared to what is required in most in simpler RL environments, and much of my recent work is in generalizing this and providing a simple pluggable standard interface. That is, the architecture I'm about to describe operates under the hood, allowing researchers and practitioners to focus on the more interesting aspects of multi-agent research. The network diagram looks fairly complicated, but the idea is quite simple. It's two layers of attention. So, agents observe two sets of uh, agents observe a set of entity entities x1 through xn, each of which is parameterized by a set of attributes. We embed these attributes with embedding layers e1 through en, and we attend over them with a standard user-provided attention function f where attention is just any function mapping a variable number of observations to a single fixed length vector. This will produce a set of entity embeddings, so a single vector for each entity, and we will flatten this again with a second attention function G, where G combines all of these into a single fixed length observation embedding O. So now we have the entity embeddings and the observation embedding, and that is the input network. We have a flat, obs we have a flat uh, observation for use with the main network. The output network here has a similar attentional model. A little bit of background here. In Atari environments, you might expect a single move action with four arguments, up, down, left, right, if we'd like to phrase it that way. We can extend this model to multiple actions with multiple arguments each, such as moving in a direction and attacking a target with a particular attack style. To do so, we're going to embed candidate arguments here, A, uh, such, uh, we're going to embed these candidate arguments into fixed length vectors B1 through Bn, and we're going to use hard attention to compare the network hidden state, which is going uh, the network hidden state O, and produce output probabilities over the potential arguments. Sampling from these will then produce the final action distribution. So that. That tells you how to select actions such as moving in a direction or selecting an attacker argument. Now, let's say that your argument is an entity, so you're attacking a target and you need to provide an ID. It's the exact same system. This setup lets you use the exact same uh, mechanism. The only thing that you have to swap is instead of using the argument embeddings, you use the learned entity embedding Z from the input network, which is one of the reasons we've done it this way in the first place. So in summary, what we've done here is provide a method for general and high level uh, general and high level conversion of local game state to a flat observation and for making complex action decisions with minimal environment specific assumptions. The second problem I encountered in this setting was that of infrastructure. Modern reinforcement learning infra makes assumptions on the environment that do not generalize well to massively multi-agent settings. It has become standard in RL infrastructure 
There we go. It's become standard in RL infrastructure to centralize optimization and distribute many copies of the environment. So in this diagram, that would correspond to putting the optimizer on the server, putting the environment on the client, and then maybe you have another cluster layer which just averages over many servers. Um, usually this is implemented as just a raw broadcast and aggregate operation in raw, uh, raw MPI. OpenAI recently improved upon this with Rapid, the infrastructure that they use to train Dota bots to beat professional players. Rapid does almost the same thing. It still centralizes optimization, but it places a copy of the policy on the clients. This allows the clients to continuously gather experience without having to interface with an optimizer. It only needs to send back trajectory batches every so often in order to step the policy. The problem with both MPI and Rapid in massively multi-agent settings is that they assume a many-to-one ratio of environments to optimizers. This assumption is good for a game genre study to date, where each optimizer server can handle many environments. In Dota, there were on the order of 100 environments with 10 agents each. But what happens when each environment has 1,000 or more agents? At this point, you can handle one environment per optimizer, or you might even need many optimizers per environment. It therefore becomes practical to flip this computation model on its head. In Neural MMO, we simulate one environment per server, and we distribute policy inference and training across many clients, each of which is responsible for, the for a subset of the agents of a particular server. I'd like to note that this is completely standard in MMOs. You have a game server, you have a bunch of remote players. I did not invent anything here. Neural MMO, Neural MMO simply provides the first implementation, to my knowledge, of MMO-style infrastructure in a reinforcement learning environment. I have a plot of some synchronization times here. Uh, the TLDRs, that we follow, they follow the trends that we would expect, and they scale quite well. I think I'm going to skip these for time, um, but we can discuss these offline later if anybody's interested. I'd like to just quickly wrap up here. So Neural MMO has gone through several iterations, and it now provides official docs, quick start guides, and even a community Discord server for help, discussion, and potential collaborations. My fundamental goal is to provide a computationally accessible and fully open source platform for all kinds of multi-agent resource or research. My work at OpenAI produced the first environment release almost a year ago. Since then, I've released two major updates, including major infrastructure expansions and a high-fidelity front-end client in Unity. The content of this talk will all be included in V1.3, which is coming soon, and is already available for preview through a development branch. Lastly, Neural MMO is my main project. I'm constantly working on expanding the environment and solving more and more general multi-agent systems problems as I encounter them. Thank you very much for your time, and if you're interested in the project, the best thing that you can do is join the community Discord server by tapping the link over here for those of you in VR, or for those of you on Twitch, the link's up here, and all this information is also on the associated GitHub account. Just make sure you check my personal account, not the OpenAI repo. That's a legacy blur hinge. I have to run to catch a plane. I can maybe take one or two quick questions, but otherwise, let's take it offline and chat on Discord. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jaysker. Bravo. That Any quick questions from chat, or are we just going to take stuff offline? Um, yeah, it, uh, if anybody has, uh, we, we can only do just a few questions, so ask your like singular question now within the Twitch mm -hmm. chat, and then JSquare can answer it for you. So we'll just give that about a minute to see if somebody has questions. Yep. Probably somebody's typing something I'm also out. very active on the Discord server. I constantly post uh, updates, things I'm thinking about, development as well as uh, answering community questions I'll and helping actually people out getting started on it. I'll actually give you this chat right here, Square, because then you can uh, communicate with the live stream Twitch chat. There will probably be a question that will come up for you. Would it be possible to make a simulation? Uh, you might want, Razif, you might want to talk to Gully about that. Um, it's, that's more about to deal with that. So you'd somebody who, more familiar with the API would have to answer that. I mean, I'd imagine what? theoretically yes, but whether it's practical, question. What was the question? Sorry, I didn't As Raza, somebody asked if it's possible to make a simulation of neurons within Neo, so I'd imagine you could have an interesting discussion with them, Gully. Uh, I mean, in short, uh, yes, it's possible to simulate a neural network in Neo. Uh, it hasn't been done, done yet, but actually we're working on it. Uh, yeah. That'd be amazing. Actually, where is Alex? Yes. Okay. So, um, 
how close is this to being able to implement in a real MMO? That's the that's the long term goal of being able to solve a full MMO. I think that an MMO is probably on the order of two magnitudes, uh, two orders of magnitude more complex than a MOBA like Dota. So I think that it's probably a hundred times harder than anything we've done to date, which is why I've decided to start small and look at it uh, from this perspective. But that is the eventual goal, and there are a bunch of systems missing. I hope that we'll be there soon. Let's see. It actually, by the way, uh, working in a real MMO, interfacing with a real MMO, that's fairly do that's doable fairly soon. Training in a full MMO is a little harder. Um, I think there were more questions if you scroll up. Can I scroll up here? Um, I don't. Think we're I not going to be up. if you if you had a question up above, above, we weren't answering any of those questions up above. If you had the question, you have to resend it. Oh, I see. Would it be Ruiz has a question? With or, or, no, that was yeah. Question. And Raza. Raza, that's um, that's something I've been talking with folks about here a little bit. My background's in AI, but um, you can definitely port things to render uh, in VR that have been trained in simulation. Whether or not you can train them directly in VR is mostly a factor of the APIs available and how many uh, good library hooks there are. Anything else here? Anybody else? Send in your questions right now, you guys, if you have any more questions for JSquare. Any questions here? I mean, Alex, just prompt me if there is any question, okay? You're like, we don't have a... Yeah, I just have Twitch chat here. I don't have the whatever the uh, YouTube stream is. Yeah, I mean, I'm also saying if there's a physical question from the audience, but I don't think there is. Okay. Oh, yes. Hello, Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that you had that set up. Yeah. It's like a lot of different realities be merged. <laughs> Do we have any non-troll questions? <laughs> well, I, I guess that's all for the questions Sorry. then for J-Square. Um, <laughs> yes, the, depending on where in Oxford you are, but yes, you can get free coffee. <laughs> sure, Reza. Go, go ahead, shoot. One more and then, uh, then I'm going to go catch my plane. Since nobody else is asking. Thank you again very much for doing this, J Square. That was a wonderful presentation. Oh, I mean, I'm always glad to check out new platforms, new tech. This has been fun. Um, I think we have one person typing one last thing, and then I'm going to catch my plane. Give them like another 30 seconds to get that in. I imagine there's a little bit of lag here. Yeah. Uh, Raza, it highly depends on which sub-area of AI you're interested in, and as well as your mathematical background. For specifically reinforcement learning, I have a few res I think I'm getting feedback from Gully here. Uh, oh, I have... Yeah. For specifically for reinforcement learning, I have a few pointers to resources on the Discord and the hashtag learning channel. Um, for me, I literally just started reading papers in college and I started implementing things. If you can replicate uh, full full scale existing papers and then you can start implementing your own ideas, that's pretty much the way to go for most of the people I know. Yeah, Chris, I imagine that there'll be a, uh, I mean, there's, you can, you can go wa watch the VOD, I'd imagine. Uh, yep, you can always replay the streams. Yeah. yeah, if you missed like part of this, you can just replay, you can watch the VOD on the channel. Yeah, and, and we'll upload this to our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I think I'm all set then. Thank you again, J-Square. Yep. yep. Thank you very much. No problem. I'll join you guys Thank on you. Twitch uh, remotely on my way to the airport. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good trip. Thank you. I hope no, this is not not hosting. What? Nah, you're not. You should let me. Okay. Okay, great. And then, uh, Gilly, you were going to have a uh, talk as well, right? Yeah. Actually, I think it was Carol first. Oh, it was Carol first? Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I'll set the broadcast for Carol. Yeah, let me move. So you'll be first next, or I? 
Oh yeah, you'll be going. Uh, well, I don't know, like n either Nex or Carol. Um, yeah. Okay, I can start. Uh, okay. I I'd like, I'd like if if you can, everyone, uh, t turn up your your uh, uh, audio to streaming, so, because uh, because I'm streaming for the local audience at the Oxford Redcliffe, so so we we get a good uh, audio. We had we had some problems before. Also, if if you, if you could, could give me the rights to for the session to be able to import uh, my slides. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Guli, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I'm I'm the I'm the CEO and uh, one of the two founders of uh, of this metaverse, Neos VR. I'm I'm very glad for this amazing uh, forward-thinking uh, session, the streaming session and live session. We're doing a lot of things at once, so, so there's definitely rough edges. Right now, uh, but but uh, yeah, this, this is this is uh, first stream this complex we had probably. So, so uh, yeah, it, it's it's running and it's 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 going good. Uh, do we have a good audio from from my side on, on yep. the streams? I have you on broadcast right now. Is, is everything all right? Okay, uh, I'm I'm switching to broadcast, so you can you can hear me better when I move. Uh, yeah, I hear you well. Yeah. So you are, you are right now in, in Neos Metaverse. It's a social space uh, that, that is not only immersive, uh, but also uh, social and cooperative. So you can use virtuality not alone, uh, but with, with someone and it's pretty awesome. I, I would like to t tell you today uh, how it came to be, uh, why virtuality is, is here to stay, why it's interesting and uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna set up the camera so, so our local audience can can see can see the projector uh, so so i'll switch the camera from my view to to manual it will stay like this and i will move closer to the projector also so one of the awesome things about neos is that you can easily import stuff uh, so, so right now I can I can just uh, take I can just take my slides from my inventory and spawn them here, and they will automatically sync to to everyone's session. Um, that is, that is quite unique, and it's because uh, Neos has a unique data, data model. Oh wow! Somebody took a picture of me. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, so I will import my first slides. This is it. Yeah. So, so Neos Metaverse, Neos means, it's short for Neos Patium, a new space. And it's basically a space uh, created by creators, uh, by our company Solirax, for creators. So as, as creators, we had a pr pretty good idea what, what is needed uh, for, for, for creators. And uh, yeah, F thank you everyone for, for being here, for coming. And so yeah. It's a pleasure to be here at Oxford Radcliffe, uh, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Neos Metaverse. Uh, I'd, I'd like to tell you about the state of VR, its advantages, where we're at, introduce you to the hands-down best metaverse there is, which is of course this one, and uh, ponder with you where this is all going, what's the future of virtual reality metaverses, uh, us. So, imagination, perceived reality, theater, statues, pictures, movies are all sort of a virtual reality, a virtual reality yeah, for, for our consciousness. But the first technical one is probably this one. I'm going to get the slide for you. Are, are the slides loading for, for, for all of you? So this is, uh, it was flipped. So this is Sensorama. It was created in, <laughs> so, so, so. yeah, thank you. It was created in 1957 by Morten Heilig. So, so it's quite old. And uh, this is like the first technical virtual reality. And Mr. Heilig tried something very important here. And he tries to, to put, uh, like take a movie experience and make it more immersive by sticking the, the head of the user inside and making the field of view bigger and uh, 
removing the outside view. So this is like a halfway to virtual reality and the important, uh, par the important feature demonstrated here, the unique feature of virtual reality is immersive. It's more immersive than any other medium, which is very useful and also it's very fun when used uh, in, in such a way. So you, you can see here, um, Mr. Heilig didn't stop uh, with, with Sensorama, thank you for the slide. Um, but he continued with this patent, which is called a telesphere mask. And as you can see, this patent from 1960 closely resembles the headsets we wear right now. So at, at that point in time, uh, in, in the in the 1960, it was like sci-fi to build a headset like this. Maybe like the audio part was doable, but like the screen, probably the optics, uh, the the what would be the source of of the image? Would it be static or what? what was sci-fi? But as we see, technology got there, and uh, this headset is is kind of the the conceptual uh, father of all headsets we have right now of virtual reality goggles. Uh, so in the next slide, you will see the actual first virtual reality headset. It it was it was built in 1965, so five years after this, and it was pretty out of this world. It was built by uh, Mr. Sutherland. We actually met in Los Angeles, and he gave us some advices for building our metaverse. Uh, it's it's awesome that he, he got to see the era where VR really took off. You can see this headset uh, has has like uh, already uh, a mechanical track of your head movement, which is very important because the other important feature of virtual reality is uh, is that it's interactive. It reacts to your head movement and also with proper input like VR goggles or controllers or some other input you can actually interact with the reality so it's not only immersive it's also the most interactive medium there is and uh, it's, it's very creative and so we have kind of the history of virtual reality and also we have kind of the main feature features that can be used and make virtual reality useful and fun uh, on my next slide, this is this is probably the most important slide for virtual reality uh, period. This is the movement to photon diagram, and th this this was the major hurdle of virtual reality all these years. So, movement to photon diagram means that our head is moving all the time, and our brain expects a new image hit our retinas. Uh, in under 15 milliseconds. If the image that comes into our eyes doesn't reflect this, then we get sick or the experience is not immersive or comfortable um, and doesn't work. So we have to do a lot of things. We have to measure the, the input of the headset, uh, the movement of the head, um, both orientation and lateral. So if, if we move in, in the, if we walk in the room, that's the lateral movement, and both should be tracked. Uh, we have to get that into a computer, uh, compute the next image, uh, send it to the display, to the headset some, somehow, translate it to the language the display speaks, uh, write the pixels, switch on the, the backlight if, if, if it has to be switched on, and then project the, the photons from the, from the uh, display through our a pupil to your retina and all this has to happen in this uh, 15 milliseconds or under uh, which 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 is uh, very important unless it's not a experiences a great experience um, many times uh, it, there were like these hype cycles people thought virtual reality is is here to stay uh, it's it's it, it arrived like uh, this hype there were multiple one was in 1995 when Nintendo released Virtual Boy, among other VR headsets, and they, they, they knew of this problem. They knew that uh, they just can't get under these 15, 15 milliseconds, so they tried different tricks. Uh, the, the screen, as you can see, was, was monochromatic to be faster, and also it was red, uh, because red is perceived not as harshly by, by, by our brain. Uh, but but they and and they supplied a stand so so the so the user user would uh, more 
more conveniently use it on a table as a static uh, device, not actually moving and wearing it around. But it kind of didn't work. And the real breaking point for virtual reality is actually technology that came from another uh, field and the smartphones. Because uh, when smartphone, smartphones were released and actually developed slightly before that, a huge, uh, huge money was, was invested into small screens and minim minimalization of, uh, of positional chips uh, as MIU devices with uh, gyroscopes that made it really sm small cheap to produce. And so virtual reality kind of piggybacks of this smartphone technology and this huge uh, investments um, investments that, that the smartphone market created uh, in, this, in this field. And so uh, this is very powerful. We have now this technology that's very immersive and all these things. Uh, and that's very exciting. What can it be used for? So uh, uh, I imagine that, that almost every, well, everything you do is more fun when it's immersive, social, uh, when, when you, 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 you believe you are really in, in the, in the uh, environment. And also virtual reality has this amazing property that it's cheaper than building uh, something in real life. It's uh, very, env very environmentally harsh to actually create things in, in real life. It takes time, it takes money, there's limited space on our planet. And so a lot of things uh, when done in virtuality are more sustainable, quicker, cheaper, and overall uh, it could be a better way to do things. Uh, we thought what, what we should do better with virtual reality uh, in 2014 with my amazing co-founder, the creator of this uh, metaverse, uh, the lead designer and CTO of the company, Tomáš Mariančík. You, you probably know him as Fruxius, mo most of you. He's, he's kind of a celebrity um, in, in virtual reality and definitely in NEOS. And uh, so we, we thought hard what, what, we should, uh, what we should make better through virtual reality. And we imagined not going to school, to, to this like uh, white room, but to actually go to school where we can see things, be with our uh, peers, with our teacher, and, uh, and have these amazing environments, like go into cells, atoms, and molecules, and really learn by experience, learn by doing, uh, and also by all being together and uh, giving giving us this natural experience going back in time to the times when we learned from someone personally uh, by going to the woods and he showed us something uh, the brain reacts really well to this so we did exactly that uh, we started a pilot project back in uh, 2014 which basically told the world how how education can be used uh, in virtual reality um, the, the project was a huge success. Uh, we got seed investment and flew off to Silicon Valley. And we had to figure out how to scale this amazing possibility to every school, uh, every, every student and every content that, that can be taught in virtual reality. So this is a massive project. And uh, so we, 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 we were finding ways of how to how to deliver this and a platform that could that could scale with the project and provide uh, this uh, amazing opportunity for for schools and students and so we went to the companies in, in Silicon Valley and asked this about this crazy vision of a, of a social space in VR and we thought there's so someone for sure working on this in in some uh, Google uh, project uh, X secret area, but uh, all, all, all the all the project we've seen and all the people we talked basically didn't give us any hope for 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 such a platform to be in the works. So we just did it. So we thought we need this platform first to to do this uh, project to scale it. So, so and everybody needs it obviously. A lot of the people just don't know yet. But everybody needs such such a social space. The gaming game engines, uh, the data model of game engines and their architecture is not really cutting this. It doesn't scale. It's not future proof. So we, we have to do a metaverse, and we, we choose uh, to name it Neos for Neos Patium, new space, and it's created by us creators for creators, and that's why it's awesome. 
<laughs> so let, let me go to 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 Neo slide. Uh, so this is this is our website neosvr.com. Uh, thank you next for the slide. Um, and so uh, to introduce Neos, it's it's quite hard to introduce someone to Neos because you have to really experience it to know what's it about because it can do so many things. So I, I will just like uh, Google through the main points of the conceptual points. So Neos VR is a next generation metaverse engine. It allows people to be together, create together, create with their own hands, uh, with countless tools that, that basically snap on your own hands. And I'm sure we'll, we'll have a demo afterwards. We'll, we'll show you how it works and you will you'll be able, you know, the physical audience here will be able to try. Um, Neos. Uh, after we we we, we uh, finish presenting, and so Neos it has atomic data model, which is very different to, to to for example game engine. Everything is synced to every user connected to the session, so everyone sees the same. There's no effort for the content creators to achieve this. Basically, like in real life, everything is synced, and so this is a, this is a team in Neos that it has a lot of the a lot of the advantages of real real life the, the the things that are great in real life still work in neos and then something more on top of it like uh, basically unlimited resources in terms of space and such and amazing tools um, so and also it it manages your content uh, thanks thanks to the atomic model to to not uh do not cover how the content should be actually displayed, interpreted technically. We can update the content to be compatible with future devices, AR headsets, VR headsets, uh, neural interfaces, uh, basically forever. So it, it's it's conceptual and much different to, to how, how things are uh, created and stored right now. Uh, so in, in terms of the visible things of the nice nice things we have we have amazing avatars i think we have the we have hands down the best avatars of any metaverse uh, we have full body tracking with up to 11 tracking points uh, which includes your knees and and elbows it looks amazing we have eye tracking for for people that have eye tracking in their headset spatial audio full mimics uh, but you need hardware for that and also we have uh, we have gestures for the for the uh, tracking and it, it really looks amazing you can see uh, some of the people here have amazing avatars unlike me uh, yeah but i think these are some of the features there are there are more uh, we it, it it would be uh it would be long to name all of them, but I think the most amazing thing about Neos is not like a feature of Neos, it's our community. And our community is just amazing. Like every time, every day, we observe what people have created in Neos is far beyond our imagination. I think the whole team uh, uh, behind Neos is totally uh, excited by what what the creativity uh, the the community of Neos is bringing, what awesome people it's attracting, and just like uh, meeting people here in Neos, it's such a treat. I think we all found new friends here, uh, and uh, I think this is the, this is the biggest point about VR, about Neos. It's not like some meta or some piece of software, but it's people, it's community, it's growing, and it, it's amazing. I, there's no words to explain how, how amazing it is. Um, yeah. And so, what was the future for Neos for for virtual reality? Um, so, so for, for Neos, um, what what we are aiming for is is adding new features, making making it more hassle free, basically doing more uh, by less. Uh, we are positioning Neos to become a full fledged spatial computing platform. So, so when you when you think about the first computers were mechanical interfaced. Uh, then, then we would use uh, command lines. Then, we, when we right now we use like uh, 2D flat, flat screen environments like GUIs, and probably the future or a part of the future of computing is uh, spatial interfaces. So that computers uh, and the environments are actually spatial, and you interact with objects. Like a picture is really a picture, a paper picture you can give someone, and it's not like a file on on some 2D represented. Uh, 
hard disk computer. A lot of these things are probably g go going to get abstract for users that uh, don't care of actually knowing where the file is on the computer and such. Yeah. Also, mixed reality, augmented reality is a big deal uh, for NEOS. Uh, all, all of this will work or, or, or already works on a headset with uh, augmented, uh, augmented reality headsets. So uh that's that, that's a big one yeah especially uh, in general the, the future of virtual reality will get only better the headsets we have right now are going to look ancient in only a few years so so the future of vr ar are specialized headsets um the the money invested uh specifically those headsets and um especially exciting uh, exciting feature uh, devices will be uh, will be uh, bra brain interfaces like Neuralink, which can connect, uh, which will probably be able to connect our users uh, directly here with also touch and on other other senses. You can see here Neuralink uh, robot that, that's that's uh, that's capable of implanting small electrodes. Every electrode has like 30 segments. It's it's flexible and it aims not to damage your brain in between the your veins, and it's tracked in real time. It should be as easy as getting LASIK, getting these chips, um, and they're they're passive, so you can uh, disconnect them. And th th this could be something really uh, interesting for VR in the future. But also, it's it's kind of yeah, uh, yeah. So, so in the end, I'd like to thank everyone f here and basically everyone who's using Neos or thinking about it for your support. Uh, Neos has also cryptocurrency. It's called Neos Credits. Uh, in its Genesis contract, it says there will be only only 50 million of NCR ever, and we are giving uh, this NCR uh, cryptocurrency to our supporters. Uh, so uh, when a lot of people need these uh, credits, it, they will probably rise in value, and that's that's our way of really saying thank you, not just words, but also deeds. And yeah, and we hope a lot a lot more people will use Neos. It's going to be much better in the future. And and we enjoy so much uh, what it is right now, and all of you. F thank you so much, guys. <laughs> nice, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Over to you next. Awesome. That was really good, man. Thank you for the slides. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it was too much, too much things to do. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So uh, now we're going to be having uh, Gil Fix talk about his uh, AI presentation. So I'll give him the floor and just stand in front of the camera and then you can, uh, I'll, I can even, are you, are you fine on putting your clips on the screen? Okay, perfect. Let's broadcast you out. All right. Let me get here. Oh, okay, uh, but for the stream, should I go in broadcast as well as the oh, you, yep. you are already in broadcast right now, Gil. Uh, oh, like automatically, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, got you in broadcast, my dude. Um, we got some echoes before. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I can just put that there. There we go. There. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so th thank you everyone like uh, that's made this possible, like Carol, Shin, Nex, uh, and Joseph, uh, and the whole Neos team to yeah make all of this possible. I think it's, it's really exciting, and, and I hope it becomes maybe like a more regular thing that you know we can we can share sort of interesting ideas. Um, actually, I'm personally very 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 interested in seeing like scientists use Neos more, like because I think like science is like about playing like you know it should be about discovering stuff and just like playing with things and messing around like i think neos is the best tool for that but um but on to my talk i'm i'm gonna be talking about uh, developing like a human like intelligence and how we can potentially use v r for this so um, wait um let me just position myself there okay yeah i don't know like that was really random like like my mac literally stopped working for no reason um 
Uh, okay, so... What? <laughs> so now I'm Carol, but I'm not actually. Uh, I'm Guillermo. Um, yeah, so so I, I, I don't know what's uh, like... Uh, well, I, I guess you didn't hear anything then? Um, we heard, right. we heard the bit of the first part, but you know, you can just take it from the top. Okay. Uh, well, in any case, uh, like the 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 point of the story is to talk about hu human-like intelligence, and in this slide, uh, I, I was saying that that was kind of the original dream of of the field of AI, and like as you can see, like all of our fictional stories. Um, oh wait, so now the slides take a bit of time to load for me. Oh, that's not the next slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it, it turned out to be harder than we thought. I mean, it wasn't just as easy as like making a robot with some flexible learning algorithm and like just put it through like in the real world or something. I mean, like if, if you put it on to have the same experience as a child, it just does not learn like a child. So basically, like, you know, it's people realized that it wasn't just quite so easy. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, so there was like uh, several like winters and summers of AI, as people have called them, uh, and and we're currently, you know, like a new wave of like hype, uh, but for for a reason because we're getting like lots of uh, amazing progress, um, and that's like you know the the deep learning uh, approach. So, so, so the idea of deep learning is basically, you know, you solve very, very specific tasks and you do it like really well, but using like lots of data and lots of compute. The, and the truth is that it, uh, it works. I mean, we've, we've basically like solved uh, AlphaGo now and, you know, our, our language models are getting really good at making language that is realistic. Uh, Solving cars are getting better. We're using, or even using like science to, um, to like, like AI to, to scientific discovery, like protein folding, and and many many other fields. So 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 this is working really really well. Um, but what about like the original goal of like human like artificial intelligence? Um, slide. Wait. Yeah. And um, so, so first, let me just come back and you know ask the question of like, why do we care about human-like AI in the first place? And I think there's like you know at least two sort of reasons. Uh, there's really like economic reasons. I mean, like th this thing will be useful for like things that uh, we want to do, like social robots. You know, robots whose actual task is to interact with people. It makes sense that they are human-like, or or at the very least, they they understand how humans work. But there's also like scientific reasons which personally like, interest me the most, and and they're like you know to try to understand intelligence, uh, because perhaps like I mean humans are still in 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 some senses the most intelligent species and thing that we know, uh, and we probably hold so many insights to understand you know this general generally mysterious thing, and of course to understand ourselves as well, which is like you know one of the deepest mysteries of like all time. Um, hmm? So, yeah. Um, so then the question is like, is the current approach fit to get this sort of human-like AI? And this is that I don't know. Like uh, maybe, um, maybe just by solving more and more tasks, tasks uh, really well, uh, we will. Maybe that's just what human intelligence is about, and you just put them together into a single machine. I mean, that's all there is to it. But I think the answer is probably not. Like I, I think if you look at deep learning systems right now, they clearly work in in many in many senses differently from humans. Um, and the truth is that we don't know why we don't understand this. And there's probably like you know things which we don't know yet, like new ingredients, which which characterize that difference. And so probably if you wanted more AI, you know. You, you you need to to do something that is not just an extension of today of today's approach. Um, hmm? So so how, how can we learn about human intelligence? Well, da from humans, right? 
Um, we just we just need to like look at humans because obviously those are the ones that hold human intelligence. Um, yeah, sorry, like my slides take a bit of time to load because they're hosted on a server. Um, so the question is, okay, how, how do we do that? Um, and there's like, uh, here's the, tra the two traditional approaches. First, like people may have tried, like, you know, to train only, only on robots and just had the advantage that it could I interact with humans. Um, by being in the same physical space as them, but they had a problem that they, were, they didn't get enough data and training time. It, it, however, people most the most common approach is to train on simulation, um, which gets lots of training data and time, and in fact that's how you get really good at certain tasks. But uh, it, it does not um, interact with humans, except perhaps in very very limited way, perhaps just a few bits saying you know whether we prefer a particular outcome or not. There. So, so, so then people have been trying to, to solve this problem. Um, wait, the slide. Load. There. Uh, ma mainly like through, through this approach, which they call uh, sim, sim to real. And th the idea is that you can indeed train agents in, in a simulation and have them learn all sorts of skills, but then you can also test them in the physical world. And perhaps you can even do this iterative loop drawn on the on the on the right, um, where, whereby um, you know we, we test on the on the physical world, and then we can gather extra data to to refine our simulation, and and, and this could be great, right? Because in in the in the physical world we can like for instance learn about humans. So for instance, there's this company called Latent Logic, which literally uh, makes uh, um, train self-driving cars, then test. And, and through like cameras and all sorts of things, they, they, they learn about how humans behave, they make models of the humans, which then they put in the simulation, so that then when they train really fast in the simulation, they have some knowledge about the humans, and they can, they can potentially iterate this. Uh, so, but the problem with this is kind of what's highlighted in red, is that there's a stumbling block which I don't think people really expected to be so hard, but it's actually when you train in a simulation and you put in a real robot, that transfer turns out to be extremely hard. It's like you train a robot to walk in a simulation, and then you try it on, 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 a, on a physical um, robot, and it just doesn't work, uh, walk. Uh, in fact, for instance, this famous research by OpenAI, where they train an a agent to be able to manipulate a cube with a hand, they had solved this problem in simulation like two years ago, and they took them like those two years to be able to find clever tricks and, and things that will make it actually work in the real hand. So yeah, so, so I think this approach is very promising, but it currently is like, it's very hard, although people are, of course, you know, trying to research how. So, so, so the approach I'm sort of considering, uh, like proposing, is I, I call it like real to sim. It's sort of the opposite, right? Uh, ra rather than like trying to put the robot in the physical world to interact with humans, why don't we just put the humans inside the vi virtual environment where the robot already lives? And, and you know, then, then the, the, the AI uh, is trains and interacts and with humans and is tested in the, in the same familiar environment. So there's no the problem that was encountered before of, of transferring, which, as I said, is really hard. And, and as we know, like humans transfer perfectly fine to, to virtual worlds as, you know, as uh, portrayed in like social VR environments. And, and then you can like do the same sort of loop that I, I put in the previous slide. But now, instead of testing on like the physical world, we test on what I'm calling like an augmented simulation, which is just a simulation, but there's like input from the physical world, right? For instance, in VR, that will be like actual human uh, position and gestures and potentially all sorts of data coming from the physical world. Um, yeah, um, in, in fact, this, this idea is, can be seen as very much related to the whole idea of mixed reality, right? It's so like uh, p people have considered, you know, like training robots in simulation then putting them to the physical world and, you know, like two very separate things. But wh what about if, if we consider like the, the, the possibility that there's like many sorts of uh, training scenarios which mix data from the real world and simulated environments in, in, in much more complicated and, and different ways. And that's basically 
try this experiment, right? From virtual reality to augmented reality, and like all of this news, like cross reality, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just mixing data from <clears throat> all sorts of sources in non-standard ways. And, and, and I'm proposing that this you know, could be like maybe a very untapped environment and system on which to do AI research. Like, it, it seems like it's, it's kind of basically made for it. Um, so, so, so the idea is to train AI in social virtual reality environments, uh, both uh, to learn about humans and human intelligence and human behavior, and also to learn about how humans and AI can interact and like learn from each other and, and so on. And here you just put like, you know, like the maybe two most popular uh, social VR right now. Uh, so VR chat is the most popular in terms of user and Nia's, well, we've heard in the previous slide, uh, talk how, how awesome it is. Um, so OxAI, that she introduces the, the, AI, the AI student society in Oxford, you know, has decided to begin tackling this challenge. I mean, it's just the beginning because this is probably like a very ambitious thing. Uh, but we, we've taken like a kind of the, um, um, dive, divide, and conquer approach, where we 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 have these three aspects, which we call like environment, agent, and experiments. Um, so 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 the environment part is. Uh, pretty self-descriptive is like where do you train the the AI? This is like a standard thing in reinforcement learning, and 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 we we need to ask questions like what sort of environments and what sort of activities are conducive to learning, and 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 I I think you know we can take inspiration from people who design toys or come up with like uh, children social games, and and like playgrounds right because I, I think if you think about it those, these are things which are basically like optimized. Uh, to like seize the capabilities of curious aliens and and have them learn like as much as possible. So you basically envision like the optimal environment as this sort of thing, where where you have like a, like a, an environment full of like people who are like playing around with with stuff, and and uh, and like full full of things where which you can like tinker with and learn from. Uh, and then you know the technical questions: How do you build this environment? Uh, one, so if we want to use like a social VR environment, we have two main options. Like we can use Unity with the Unity SDK for VR chat. Uh, so that that one is like very limited in what you can do. In, in Neos, on the other hand, you have like way more freedom, like in terms of like interfacing with with other code, and also in terms of building. And also it has this uh, cool advantage that you can like build inside Neos. Um, So yeah, the second uh, part of the environment is developing the interface. So you, you need you need a, a system that allows you know information to transfer between the environment the AI and because uh, a machine learning and AI research is mostly done in the Python programming language today with very optimized libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch um, and uh, you know social VR happens in very different sort of software like based on Unity editor and C Sharp uh, like just based on Unity and C Sharp uh, you know we need to build a bridge and we, we can take like inspiration from instance from there's a library called ML agents which basically solves this problem but only for the Unity editor. So, so you can like make Unity environments in Unity and have it interface with, uh, with, with a machine learning code in like a very flexible way. So, so what we would like to do is to have a similar system but which allows you to interface information with like social VR environments like, like Neos or VRChat and so on. And so you can have an agent in here uh, that, uh, or, or a system in here that communicates with a machine learning code. And we can take also inspiration from the neural MMO that the first speaker talked about. Um, um, you know, because uh, he's trying to build like an infrastructure that is very general and allows for like persistent and rich environments to have like potentially many many uh, agents in them, which is you know something that we would like to to have as well in uh, in virtual reality. Um, so uh, yeah, this is a placeholder to say that uh, I have like a little demo on on the demo desk there. To remind me to say that, which is like a, a camera in Neos that is doing image recognition, and that's just to show, like, you know, doing interfacing today actually is quite easy with Neos because you can like send data back and forth through the network, and so that camera is actually sending data to my computer, which is also here, doing the inference there with a neural network, and then you can see the result right on Neos 
like directly kind of real time um so so the second aspect is like uh, developing the agent of course the, the 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 actual ai that learns and there's a few questions there like like even before learning like what prior knowledge should we put it in because there's like so much research already and you know useful things that intelligent agents and in particular uh, human like ai should have uh, for instance, you know, like understanding audio and speech, like understanding images through computer vision and language, all those things have a lot of research. And so it will, it will make sense to kind of include like existing work in like pre builds kind of when it's born um, on, the, on the agent. And I put these images because there's like really cool research from Adobe, -ish, you know, about how to animate characters to kind of give them realistic motion so that uh, then you can like have them move, like tell them how to move with like much higher level actions, like go there and then it goes like, uh, it, it, it animates the actual muscles uh, in, in a realistic way. And so that you don't have to, to learn those, those details while it's already solved. Um, and, and so we can focus on learning more interesting things. Uh, so so, so th this is the point of this slide to say that uh, we, we also need to develop, of course, learning algorithms, uh, and, and, and this will be like one of the major things to develop different reinforcement learning algorithms so that the agents can like learn in, in social VR. And, and here I put like a bunch of uh, uh, areas that people have researched in, in reinforcement learning, like how, how, how to have agents that learn, that I think are particularly important to get like, you know, this, this human-like AIs that are general and like are able to like do all sorts of things um so so, so I'm, I'm particularly interested in in this one um one of them is called uh, people like basically call it curiosity they, they also call it like intrinsic motivation uh, and basically the idea is that in in current like deep learning research you know people have like a very well defined uh, task um, and 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 that's just what the agent learns. But of course, that's not how children learn, right? Like ch 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 children tend to like uh, you know like be curious about learning all sorts of things, and 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 they don't like specialize in one thing. And and people in like developmental psychology and, and other areas have formalized a way that you could like get that behavior. So so, so this part and they call it curiosity. And this particular implementation is based on so, uh, Pierre E. Audier, who, who who calls this like intrinsic motivation through learning progress. And, and the idea is like very simple. Basically the agent first chooses a goal, then uh, uh, like tries to learn how to do it. This could be done with like a standard AI approaches because then you have like a specific task already defined then you like measure in some way like how how like much did i learn did i, did I learn something from trying to solve this goal or not and and if yes then you make the goal more likely to be chosen next and if you didn't learn much from it then you make it less likely and then you like iterate and, and the idea is that you know, like you focus on things in which you are making learning progress uh, you know like a, a baby like Will be like it will be pretty stupid for a baby to try to learn how to do like integral multivariate calculus because it just will make absolutely zero progress. It just doesn't have any of the pre prerequisites, right? Instead, it makes sense for it to try for for him to, or her to try to like learn uh, how to walk or something because you know it has already some. A basic movement and it can make some progress eventually after it learns enough if like you maybe in high school or something you know it will actually be able to make learning progress in this more complicated things um, and then it will find those things interesting and and this and the idea of this research says that humans have this sort of inbuilt bias towards finding things in which to make progress like interesting and and you know like evolution has selected that so that we can like learn in in like a very effective way and like learn as many things as possible from from an environment which a priori is like really uncertain um <laughs> This is like a detailed slide saying like you can change this with RL reinforcement learning. And, oh yeah, actually, so this is just to show uh, secondary action there. This is just to show that uh, basically another example of like the the interface thing. Uh, oh, oh wait, just one second. Oh, this video. 
Okay, this video is like a sped up. I had a slow version with it, which kind of was nicer, but it doesn't matter. They like did. The, oh, here's slow version. Okay. Uh, so, 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 so the point is that you know I, I made this like no more than an hour basically, although it took longer to debug, and. And this is another example of like an, an, an interface where I'm like controlling this from Python. And, and this is like a setup where if you're inside the sphere, the agent's right arm controls the little plane. It's like, it's like very contrived, but this is like a good example in which to test the curiosity algorithms. Because the idea is that if, if, even if it starts wandering randomly, it will decide to spend more time inside the sphere because it's able to like make progress and learn in any thing, which is how to control the plane. Um, I mean, this isn't learning yet, but it's it's just like an example that uh, you know we, we we could be having some stuff soon. Um, so so the last part is like experiments, which is like this very high level thing, like uh, of the projects, like how how do we measure progress, and like what time like what experiments do we do to test whether it's making progress or not what's interesting in that sense and you know like what do we measure about the agent um, and and actually I, i'll show next like the, this video which i which i really like which shows that you know um there's sort of experiments that one could do to measure whether ai is human like so, so i will show like a video of a uh, like a bunch of shapes and if you threw this to like a standard you know computer vision you know network or something it will perfectly recognize these are like some triangles there's some square maybe it will even recognize the fact that the triangle is inside the square or, or or things like that but as you will probably see when i play the video like you know a human that has you know a significantly different set of experiences will see like something very different and like you'll see now uh, Yeah, basically. Um, so it's like you know, it's like you you can like feel the tension, and like you can feel like all sorts of emotions that these things may be feeling, and you you can even like get get engaged with the story, right? Even though they're like literally squares and like triangles and a circle, like, but you know that that just to show that you know the sort of a uh, human learn experiences and priors that clearly AI right now does doesn't have. Um. Oh wait, uh, there. Yeah. So, so yeah, like basically the experiments team it will be like the most interdisciplinary, like talking about, like looking at all of the areas, like from psychology, behavioral science to human-computer interaction, and asking questions about what we could. Uh, like what sort of experiments and, and science we could do with, with this sort of system. Uh, and that leads me to like my concluding slide, which, you know, just as like, there's like many further opportunities, as I said, like our idea is to build this as a useful framework and tool for researchers. But I think there's also like a really nice opportunity to have this as a, as a platform for like public en en engagement and enjoyment of AI research. Like you can like, you know, uh, like train an AI just the same way you will train a, a dog or a pet. Uh, rather than necessarily having to write machine learning code like in Python. And, you know, probably the, the coolest ideas that you could do with this we haven't even thought of yet. So, yeah, thank you very much.
Do you want to recover your body? Um, I, th I think next maybe we can talk uh, a bit about news or... So, uh, so actually Alex which, uh, was one of the organizers of this. Uh, actually, I, I forgot to mention him. So like, thank you for, for your help. We'll say a few words now. Uh, you are now... Oh yeah, are, are you going to be doing a presentation as well, Shin? The third Carol. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Oh, just gonna get the headset. Can you hear okay. me, guys? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, so, um... Ah. Yeah, so as uh, Guillermo said, um, I'm Alex, and basically, I just want to give some context about what's going on. So oh, absolutely. we're here. We're here in uh, Oxford with uh, Carol, Guillermo, and Shin. And basically, uh, we came up with the idea a few months ago to meet here in Oxford physically, but host the session in VR. And I think it's really it's really exciting to um, to see it to see it actually play out. Like, I think we're in the really early stages of VR, but uh, what really stands out to me about NEOS is just how, uh, just how far along it is and the ability to create and, and the ability to interact with people. Like, all of this stuff you've just seen, the whole presentation was created uh, using the toolkit that NEOS provides, and all of that is provided out of the box. There isn't any other VR platform that you can do that on. And a lot of the tools actually just were created by actually the community, and I just reused them on this platform. Yeah, so that brings me on to another point, which Guillermo just mentioned, is the community. So, Neos, the scale of Neos isn't that huge right now, but the community is really strong, and uh, the the value of each community member is is really high. Like the amount that people contribute, the amount that people interact, and people are very active. It's a it's it's a growing community and it's really exciting to see uh, something like this happen in VR because really there's nothing else there's nowhere else where this is happening and uh, I think in a few years time are we good yeah I think in a few years time we'll look back at this and this this is a milestone in uh, in the development of VR I think uh, Neos will really pave the way for for a lot of this uh, innovation in VR. So I just really want to thank uh, thank the whole team, the whole Neos team, for making this happen. Especially uh, Fruxius, who is basically the sole developer of the whole project, and he's created this amazing thing where we we have the ability to you know create things like this. This event wouldn't have happened without without the the Neos platform, and I'm sure this is just the first one of many. So oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank Probably everyone. Yeah, and it's really to show off that the fact that it's the collaboration. I can work with somebody all the way in Australia, and I would be in America, and I could feel right I'm across from them, and I can see what they're doing. They can see what I'm doing when I'm trying to like work on something. It's basically like having a platform like Unity, but running real time in VR, where I can feel like I'm across from a person. Which that that to me, I've seen it firsthand of the collaboration ability that it allows is um, amazing. Because normally a project that would take you around like a couple of months takes you only like one or two weeks to complete inside of something like this because of that aspect of collaboration. So once we see more individuals start actually using Neos, it naturally grows and makes more things happen because of the different minds that are inside of it. And um, it's going to be really interesting to see where that's going to take us for possibilities of AI inside of here as well. Because I really liked um, what Gilly was saying about of having some form of AI that would be in here that would actually be learning through, you know, human communication naturally and seeing our movements uh, eventually 
VR is even going to get to the point where we'll have our whole bodies completely tracked out and, you know, you'll really fully be in the experience. And, you know, something like that is probably, you know, seven or eight years away of where we really want to be. But, you know, I, I think with people inside the community already uh, developing out this kind of experience and what they foresee is kind of like it's making a uh, like virtual dreams for the most part. And I'm so excited to see where it can go. So we have one question from Altai, from which you. is, uh, yeah. What's the question? Uh, on, on our stream. So is how, how are we going to make sure that this technology is not abused? Uh, you know, should there be some sort of regulation in place, I guess, in terms of AI and VR, as both, I suppose? Who is the question for? Is it is is the question for next? Uh, I w I wouldn't be too sure because I don't work with uh, AI. I work mostly. It's really on early reality. stages. Okay. Yeah, it's really hard to say at this stage because I mean we're just exploring the the potential of this technology. Like you can I mean, see, there's a lot of rough, rough edges. Uh, what, what do you think about VR in that case? Do you think there's any potential space for abuse? Say that again next. Oh, I didn't say anything. Ah, is that Shin? Yeah, that would be Shin. Could you repeat that, Shin? Oh, it's a really funny dance right now. <laughs> What was the uh, question again, Shin? Uh, so, do you see any potential, uh, like, abuse with this technology? I don't really foresee too much abuse when mostly people are just working together on situations. If there is any abuse, it would probably be for different users that would be in the experience that want to cause some form of abuse, but you have control over your world and the experience and what you're doing with it. So if you're planning out on trying to make out a project or, or do something, that would be like saying um, somebody would open up your Unity project file and start messing with your project. Nobody would be messing with your project if you had a form of control over it so I think that the control that's inside of NEOS right now is uh, really amazing and, all, and those permissions will even grow as more people come inside the experience um, and as it develops, it develops out more. Hopefully okay. yeah, it, it feels great to be back in my mask body. This is Carol again. I, 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 I just word, would um, like to say that, uh, that uh, AI, uh, in VR I, I I'd like to say that, that uh, you know, we as Team Neos will uh, uh, be in a sense that, you know, where you get your data from. So there was this uh, Microsoft Twitter bot uh, that sort of, you know, as, as after like a, a one hour live in 24 hours, it became like a racist, uh, really abusive bot just because you have these, you know, trolls spanning it. So, you know, you know sort of similar things that kind of happen in uh, in the virtual reality world as well, right? In VR chat, there's, you just get lots of crazy people that go there, uh, do all sorts of crazy stuff. So if you're training your AI agent in that kind of environment, that AI agent will very soon become also, uh, you know, a troll as well. Uh, we actually, when we uh, started designing the research project, we said, how are we going to build real functions for our agent? And one of the things we, like, one of the first things that, that we thought about was uh, to basically uh, gauge um, uh, the, the length of conversation that that agent will get. But then you know, one of the problems that, that can lead to is that the agent will just start maybe, you know, pre like start doing striptease or like that sort of stuff could happen. Uh, so that's something I think I think, if, really I think if AI was getting to that potential, then it's kind of being uh, to its point where it's actually being successful because then it's learning. <laughs> then it's uh, actually yeah, it's, but, but gaining it's, a form of emotion and even, you know, would possibly getting to a form of it even passing a Turing test, I would imagine. <laughs> well, it, it wouldn't have emotion, but it, it would definitely 
behave uh, in a sort of human-like way, but it's you know it, it would just mimic what humans do, right? So it, it, we've got to be very careful how we train our AIs, which is why uh, I think it's in one, on one of your more slides uh, we have this thing called curriculum learning. So basically, we're going to be teaching our AI like ch children like we teach our own children so we're literally going to have like a nursery <laughs> and this will have like uh you know we can hire people who are experts in particular arts uh certain type of things and then we teach the ai uh in a very careful way in a very controlled way so that's one of the things so i we think we how we can control uh the sort of ethical situation Oh yeah, yeah hopefully that, that, that answers the question. That and I think, uh, like for example, if you're trying to train AI, you can have it in a controlled environment by having it in one sector, one area, and you're just feeding out information. You're seeing what information comes out from the AI that you're trying mm -hmm. to teach or train. Yeah. So, so guys, I mean, one of the, uh, the challenges started, is the you know it's here. very hard to get uh, data if you do that. Is, is so, already the mind on uh, it that's going to be one of the challenging things so, to so, do. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll give uh, so we'll opportunity for the live, could, live uh, audience uh, here you know, in a to, to try, try virtuality. Uh, we could have something in VR like what uh, Amazon has with their Mechanical Turk. So the Amazon Mechanical Turk is basically a platform uh, where people can get paid to, to label data. So we could do something similar in VR uh, once we have like, you know, uh, quite, quite a, I guess, uh, a big user base that we can pay users uh, to like help us teach our AI and train AI. Uh, so that's that's one way to do it, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I thought for our part, we're going to design a game and then people can come and play with uh, the AI. So something like hide and seek, for example. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Still there, guys. Thank you. So, awesome. Yeah, so uh, is there any questions or should we start just let us try uh, yeah. VR and uh, next can give a tour? Yeah, and that's kind of why I'm here. I'm here for the after party. Okay, cool. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna let's grab some students. Sweet. I'll get rid of some of these things. So what what's the difference with this one and the one I just This one is much better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just you'll see. Like the picture is much clearer. Yes. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. But I can still see clearly the words the words on the big monitor. Is that because some yeah. Yeah, I mean like the resolution isn't Oh it's the resolution stuff. Okay. Uh, this one's jump, yeah? Hey, you mean when, when I walk physically? A little bit. A little bit. Whoa. Sorry. Sure, why not? AI party. What a better of a way for AI to learn, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, I can see you, Gamo. Of course. But I, I'm not sure I'm really moving in what I'm seeing. Yeah. 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 Ah! Oh. oh, there he goes. I think he was still in fly mode. So, okay. Or it says, would it be possible to make Neos detect <laughs> when you're taking your headset off and replace ah, you with a bot of yourself? Um, maybe. What's this? I, I don't, I, I don't think it would be, have like, maybe it would have AI, but yeah. I imagine that would be more an NPC. If you really want something like that. Do you always have this uh, menu bar in front of you? Okay. Are you trying to close down your menu in front of you? Yeah. Um, what uh, well, controllers are you using? Not at this work mode. 
So now I'm, five, like, like, I'm limited on oh, the ground. So this, button right? yeah. press, this menu button, you're going to move that to the uh, left side of your head and press it once. And then it should close it down. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Thank there you, you go. Okay. No problem, man. Ah, see. You can kind of like teleport around. Uh, I'll show you even how to like equip some stuff so then you can like see. You no, know, the I'm standing outside you, right? Uh, Gamble. The things I'm that are built inside of here. Is that right? Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. So here we go. I got some like different brushes I can give off to you. <laughs> oh. There you go. And oh, Left. let me let me. Uh, oh, there you go. There you go. So what you can do is just grab onto it and then pull trigger, and then you'll see that you can actually start drawing out with stuff. Okay. So it's similar to something like Tilt Brush, but you can have it, you know, collaboratively in VR. Okay. So there's this and then can you export this as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can all export the to any yeah, like, 3D ah, model out of so use. That's the grab button. So with your right hand, you double press like And we also have some like interactive props here. Yeah. This, all of these things have been made uh, using our logic systems. Um, yeah, already first try, and there's something turning to turn into red. Visual scripting. So if you grab well, onto one, I, I cannot uh, steal. Let's. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, let go real quick. Is this how it grows? There you go. So if you want to try with the lightsaber, double press grip to equip it. There you go. And then press down on the center of your touchpad uh, to activate the lightsaber. So, there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so sorry, how can I hurry it? And all of, all of the logics and all of the systems Wrong made button. out within Neo switches. Nice job. Um, Oh, so you don't have your finger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. And, and then oh, this is the first thing everyone wants to do. Yeah. And it, and if you want to de-equip an item, you just double press grip again. Yeah. And we also have uh, some other interactive stuff, like such as a chessboard. Hey, Carol, I think you're still in front. And you can move around the chess pieces individually, which is pretty cool. You can't do that, that's an illegal move. <laughs> RMVR. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I guess we can, you know, have all the possibilities. You said how to hurry it. <laughs> the, the, game, the game where the uh, castle goes over the, the pawn. <laughs> Trigger. That, that would be a hard chess game. Yeah, I already kick it. And, and say, um, I normally yeah, work with... You know, like Maya or, or something like that. If I wanted to import things which aren't made oh, in, in here, is, is that easy enough to do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you could import uh, any 3D model that you want, even texture it within the experience, yes. or you, you can import it and then it should have the texture applied already out on it. And uh, you can also mm -hmm. make models in Blender and import them, but yeah, Maya as well. Any 3D model and you Oops. can script it all from within here. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Uh, it's like a painter. And then can you package that Ooh. as well to share with someone? You wouldn't be able to have it as like a package file, like let's say if you're trying to like re-export it back out for like Unity, but when it comes strictly yeah. for like trying to make a demo for VR, you could have a whole entire environment and then build out that environment within being inside the experience. And you could even have multiple people helping you build out that experience. So um, somebody could be like working on logics over here, or somebody could be working on the modeling or setting it up right over there, or somebody could be working on the textures. So you're having multiple people work on the scene at the same time. And it allows for that kind of I'm totally confused. Within within VR. Sounds uh, very cool. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, because at the moment I'm dealing with the typical kits and uh, Unity projects. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I, I have experience that... building through Unity and, you know, it is nice it's to you'd be able to like use your like mouse and keyboard, but I think as time goes on and when tools are improved inside of here, such as like even in-world sculpting tools or in-world mm -hmm. manipulation for VR, you can, or like vertex right, manipulation right, right. or even terrain editing, yeah. you could have stuff inside I'm of VR that something. can really kind of make it so then you can find stuff that normally you would never be able to make with your mouse and keyboard. 
So yeah. it's like getting that kind of like one? transition of making VR more like a tool and not really like just this niche sort of thing oh. where, you know, it, it feels like so everybody will start having it just like how they would a computer monitor or something like that. Yeah. They can use VR as a tool in that way. I can also show you how to uh, scale some stuff. I got like a neuron over here. So, so yeah, and you can right. grab onto it, and then to scale it, you just uh, press both grips, and you can like move oh, it and scale it up and down. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize there's a button there. So is this some? And, no. and, and oh. you, you, <laughs> yeah, you made a little pretty good. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And you, you, you've, you, you've used VR before as well, yeah? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Do you, do, um, which, uh, do you have a personal headset at home, or? Uh, yeah, I have a, the first Rift, well, the, the uh, oh, first, um, you like, yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that one. one. Yeah, I haven't really been, you know, seen a reason to change either. The new ones look good, but not, not you know, big improvements to, you know, to upgrade. Oh yeah, the uh, field of view on that and the resolution is okay, pretty some, low compared to now. It's just it. like right now I'm using an index and it, yeah. and, it, and it is pretty good for its visual quality. Wow. And uh, I think it's only going to improve once uh, they start making out ones that do verifocal displays or eye tracking, and we'll even have our yeah. bodies to where we don't try it. Just anymore. come we'll just, close to me you know, and down have this thing. You have yourself. <laughs> being projected inside of a, <laughs> a virtual experience. Yeah, exactly. How, how long have you been using my for? Sorry? How long have you been using my oh. for? Yeah, yeah. Using Maya? Thank you. Oh, um, since uni, so a long time. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Maybe like 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do, you, do you have like specific like art projects that you think that you'd ever want to like demo out? Or? Uh, not really. Um, it's more just um, exploring, really, because I, because I had a kind of a break from it as well, so I like to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's understandable. I have a lot of personal projects myself. We're getting to the yeah. tutorial for people when they come. Yeah, and I, I can actually show you even the. Um, have you ever? Um, are you are you ever interested in like uh, logics or like scripting or anything like that? Have you messed around with any like JavaScript? Yeah, you've been thrown into all of them. Have you ever? Yeah, so um, I, I've done a bit of uh, Python and C sharp as well. Yeah, so you can imagine. Here, let me spawn something out real quick. So right now I'm accessing my inventory, and uh, the thing that's so nice about Neos is once you've created something, you can just add it immediately inside of your inventory and spawn it out to show anyone whenever you want. So let me get it out, go to my logic Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I guess that's probably the maximum. So, so this one specifically is logics that's tied yeah. in for then, um, yeah, adding like facial okay, yeah. animations for characters. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, and, okay. and it goes off of the controller for enacting out okay. a function. Yeah. Um, so you can see that yeah. it's using would be using the right controller, yeah. and it would be okay, standard thanks. controller, and then it has all the different inputs of the controller, such as trigger, okay, your yeah. secondary, your grip, yeah, and okay. you can set the smoothing value right okay. there. And those I can numbers, just look around. and that's okay. basically. But you can see that it's pretty okay. cool because normally you'd see something like this in Unity or Blender, yeah. and you're trying to like you know take notes, but you're actually physically able to move around the nodes and see them in virtual yeah, okay. space. So oh, yeah, like this. That oh, sort that's of like physical okay. physicality oh, yeah. inside of VR. Do you, do you find it's quicker, or be, because the first thing that comes to my mind is, all well, the text is a bit rubbish. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't say that it'd be quick, quicker than if you're trying to do like type-based code, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. But for something of like when you're trying for somebody, I guess who's like brand new to it, it might be like yeah. a better of a no, process to have okay. them to like learn it. But I've seen people be very quick with it, and they can just, you know, it, it, even probably at the same speed as you would have with a normal. <laughs> Visual okay, so, think, yeah. I think. Yeah. so okay. it's basically oh, yeah. allowing visual scripting, but oh, yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> within VR. <laughs> and then can oh, you yeah. get kind of, or I assume you, you can then have live feedback oh, from that cool. as well, so they can see mm -hmm. what, oh, yeah. what they're doing, which is exactly. quite nice. Yeah, you could be right next to the person oh, yeah. who's doing the logics and learn from that yeah, okay. person is by seeing them physically. So, yeah, I'll, I'll so take you're this, standing yeah. right next to that person, you can see, oh, this is uh, yeah. where they put that node here, I'll try that on mine too, and then you can actually yeah, okay. side by side the person. Instead cool. of being something where it's 
just like you're seeing on a Discord call yeah. or a Skype call where they're screen sharing, <laughs> showing, fun, oh, yeah. you have to do this or move this, and then they're following them around. Yeah. But then they can learn <laughs> okay, yeah. virtually oh, yeah. right next to the person, which nice. can be a lot more impactful for learning Sorry? when you can see it physically and when you this feel one? like you're across in person. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wait, on, on what yeah. island? All right, okay. thanks very much. No problem. I'm glad that you, uh, you oh, know, yeah. were able to get through the uh, presentation. Oh, yeah. Well, it. Where is this? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. No All right, I'm going to take this up yeah. now. So, fuck me. Nice to meet you as well, man. Uh oh. See ya. Look at the sky. <laughs> this is nice. Okay. Oh. Um, door, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry. There he goes. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. shit, what just happened? Oh, no. I need to make myself smaller. Yeah, and then I can just... Hey, stop yeah, bad mapping so your UI, we're working on it. Yeah, like, uh, how do you... <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Oh, shit, oh, shit. what did I just do? Um, but, do like, now? yeah, the stuff you do here is really amazing. Um, yeah. The only thing is, I think, you know, I'm hoping oh, that, yeah. um, like, so where do I go? through the hassles, right. we will have, like, better resolution. Can I go back? I'm in, like, uh, the menu. Entire FPS. Yeah, yeah. Then you can imagine people like spending scene, here uh, all day. Yeah. Some people already spend here. No, like, not yet. Some people already spend like loads of yeah. time here. Yeah, yeah, uh, probably. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's me. yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wait, who's this? Uh, okay, how? Uh, yeah. You can pick them up by double the Oh shit, what just happened? Okay. Um, um and okay. fortunately I can't do that Veer because for whatever reason okay. it's broken. I don't have anybody in broadcast right okay. now. Okay, like, yeah, like Actually, that. I think okay. they're the ones that are in broadcast. They would have to switch okay. it themselves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's probably not broke. It's just they're in, they're, they're in their own broadcast. Okay, oh. Okay, some things, uh, yeah. The things will turn into the texture you have. Okay, so... Let me clean oh, shit, I just pressed this again. Oh, sorry. Like, sure oh, yeah, so which one, which one should I press? Uh, so which... Trigger. Yeah, all trigger, okay, sorry. So I'm, I'm back in the menu, so how do I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. And so I, I press... Okay. Okay. <laughs> well... And you can also like uh, take the art with the other hand out of the, oh. of the gun. I like yeah. I like how Carol um, oh, gave shit, one sorry, of the new people a material okay. gun, and now they're just going yeah. around the whole environment, just shooting the material off everywhere. Yeah, wonderful. I, Thanks mm. for that. Boy, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> exactly the way that I matched. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then okay. Can yeah. I increase my volume? Uh, can, you can load another I don't know. Room. Here, wait. Let me see. Okay. Mm. Oh, on the stream? Does it sound? Yeah. Oh, sure. the, the, really? oh. Okay, okay, so, uh, so I need to walk uh, there, right, to get it. it okay. Okay. I don't think I can increase it any more than I can oh, yeah, okay. with this. Oh, shit. Okay. Mm. I don't know what to oh, do no. with my this step on it, because I can't even, like... I can't even... Leave. Yeah, okay. No, oh, he's in your ear. <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 So I can just do like... It, it, it's a convex half shape. Oh, okay, yeah. Basically the smallest shape that can fit. Yeah. Nice. It's great for like swords, shields, stones. Yeah. I, th I think maybe maybe my uh, a few people might be watching it from <laughs> the university, like maybe on their phone. Oh maybe. yeah. I don't. I'm not sure. Oh. This is also done with that. No. Oh, no. I don't think so. No. But it looks like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some people are. Uh, yes. It's really cool. Okay. Let's play some chess. <laughs> um. Is that your name? Yeah. No. So I need to. <laughs> Okay, I no. can I can do this right and just move it. Yeah, you can just grab it. Yeah, okay, but this P... is not enough. Oh, shit. 
Okay. You can make yourself that small that you will be a figure. People <laughs> are. Okay, well. You can play it as um, so, a new game. Okay, so I would do the. No, that's too big. <laughs> oh shit, what did I just do? Okay. Now you're giant. Yeah. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, oh no. I'm not It says people are something <laughs> weird. Oh shit. Okay. Oh shit, okay. Oh, yeah. trying VR. Okay, so yeah, I'm here, yeah. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now I, I moved a bit too much. Oh man. It's quite hard. But it's, it's good no one's playing against me. Oh yeah, yeah. So I just <laughs> okay. Oh. Nope, you're gonna play <laughs> against me right now. Okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll just uh, <laughs> move out of this. Um, I'll lose that. Oh, are we playing? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to get into that kind of game against me, man. Um. I mean, we can, uh, but you're gonna probably get beat here all day. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, that's. Because uh, <laughs> chess games usually take uh, quite a while. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm probably done. I can't just. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks to you. Was this your first VR experience? Uh, no, but it was a really like it was first the best time you tried nails. Yeah, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really awesome. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah. It means a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, Veer. Help me clean up. <laughs> Just gonna take a look if everything is alright. Yeah, he's he's pretty small right now. I'll just reset it to to normal scale. Yeah. The environment got really? doinked, Carol. He had a material gun when he started getting people in there. <laughs> what did I say? I can hear everything. Yep. <laughs> Do I put this here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. And. Okay. No, she isn't. <laughs> um, so this, yeah, okay. It's a bit distorted of you. There's also a, a wheel under the headset right here. Okay. You, you can use the. A wheel? Yeah, you can, you can use the adjust your engine. Under the. I don't think people can play you as speeches oh, right I now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, cheers. <laughs> it's kind of just like it's showing off news uh, for like a couple uh, minutes uh, per person. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah. oh, that's better. Okay. So what do I want to do? Oh shit! What's this? On the other control. I think it's this one. Oh okay. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. So the second one? Uh, yeah, here. Okay, cool. So, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So this. Which one is the trigger? This one? Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, oh shit. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. It makes like the smallest shape possible. Okay, okay. It's, it's good for like stones and shields and so on. Yes, at least you can interact with some stuff. Well, so. Okay. Oh, thanks, Fear. Thank you for sticking with us. Hey, man. I don't know what to do. Okay. Well, I want to play some. I do, but my feet want to move as well. How do I sit down? Let me see. There, there won't oh, be okay. any sitting, sitting on these ones, but I mean, you can, yeah, you can do a squat. <laughs> Are you pretty good at chess? Wait, can they hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. they can, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, 
Uh, how can I? You're not like one of those chess masters, right? That know like ten moves before they're even done, right? <laughs> not really. How can? I saw that one video where the guy was like doing chess and he was like fully blindfolded and beat like four dudes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm always... Are you trying to change your movement or? Trying to run? Oh yeah, the, the, you're already on Just... Yeah? Yeah, you're already like Wait, so... Oh, so, okay. Oh, I see. Oh, this one doesn't work. Okay. Okay. The movement should work out. Oh. So. Are you, did he give you um, the index controllers? Um. Okay, so press the uh, bottom button on the left, and then it should close down this this guy for you, and then you don't have to have it on your hand. Which one? Oh, the uh, bottom or the top button. So it should be the B button. Oh, okay, cool. Control. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, what can I do here? Like, is there anything? Yeah, we got some like uh, drawing brushes right here. You could uh, make something real quick. I could even like glue it up if you do make something. A bunch oh, of different tools. You got the uh, okay. um, just like some flat plane brushes that they're kind of animated and moving. Or we got uh, some particle ones, or even uh, some smooth ones where you can get kind of like nice effects. So to de equip that one, you just double press grab. Okay. Just grab the one behind now. Oh, so uh, press grip twice. Oh, sure. Twice. To de equip grip. that one. Yeah. So kind of like grip on the controller like two times. Is this one? Oh, that would be trigger. Yeah. <laughs> that works too. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me see. No, that's not it. Oh. No, that's not it. It'd be the uh, side of the controller, so you can actually, they have like a, a point where you can grip it. It doesn't really feel like it, it doesn't feel like a button. Oh, okay. It's actually oh, grabbing I think the I controller two times. Oh yeah, so you're gripping right now. Oh yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay. Yeah, so oh, make sure that you're not yeah. grabbing anything, and then press grip twice. Yeah? Hey, uh, just take this. Hello. Okay. Oh, there you go. Now you got the other one off. Oh, but I think you re it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm be happy with that. There you go. Yeah. You can actually use your other hand to, like, if you grab it, you can, like, move it around to position it. Am I almost hitting somebody? Oh, no, you're fine. Cool. Oh, are you meaning in real life? <laughs> yeah, you might be. Yeah, in real life. <laughs> yeah, you might be. <laughs> Also, another pretty cool thing that we got here for you is uh, a lightsaber. Oh, right. That's one of my uh, favorite items. Okay. You double grab to unequip your uh, tool, and then you grab that. And the two grip? Yeah, there you go. And then press down on the center of your touchpad so that... Press down, yeah. There you go. You can kind of like wave around. <laughs> this is not really a... Uh, okay. And then you can use your other hand to like... <laughs> okay. Let me go look up a quick super quick. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's kind of hard to grab it from here. I'll just grab it. And all of these items and objects have been made and scripted out all within VR. Even the malls yep. were important. Imported. All while wearing the headset and everything. There we go. Can we... Okay. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. How, how do I get out? <laughs> oh, you would take off the headset. <laughs> Check. 
Oh, you want to do it again? No, I'll just uh, put this one. <laughs> Seems that someone changed the uh, the materials on the avatar. I'm guessing you were shown that. Who on me? No, I meant like on the Superman model. Oh. Or Shazam. Or... Yeah, maybe it was Shazam character. I forgot he had the Shazam character. <laughs> It's a pretty cool model, though. I'm gonna say. Oh, definitely. When did when did you wake up, or did, were you just watching the stream? I just got back from shoveling heavy wet snow. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah, so. This, this. Yep. I would say, yeah. considering you know those are. Which Jason actually went pretty well. Next time, uh, I'll uh, get Gilly a little bit more set up uh, on slides. <laughs> he was uh, using a video instead of a slide, so yeah. I was like, hey, you probably should... Nice. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, Carol. Yeah. Hello. F thank, thank you so much, Nex. Uh, no I, I think we're wrapping up here, because everybody uh, already tried here who... who, 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 who Oh sweet! And, and thank you so much for for organizing this event. I know it was something very different than usually. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of th things didn't go go right exactly, but a lot of things could have gone much wronger. So th thank you so much, Nick, for organizing this. No problem. You're, you're amazing. I wish I could. Uh, I've I've been with you guys for yeah. about an hour, traveling snow. So just got back from that. <laughs> yeah, the snowstorm last night. Yeah. The audio is not great here. Uh, I didn't hear you properly. Oh, but I was just game. shoveling snow it, it, the past hour, so that's why I wasn't able to go. <laughs> yeah. See you later, guys. Thank you so much. No problem, Carol. Yeah. Bye. Have a good one. No, we're picking up. <laughs> Bye. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks again, Gully. I think this is Gully. Neosmox says, Carol, why do you carry a sheet of created iron on your back? <laughs> I think that's because he got his material was changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, he just is here with us. Hello. Oh, uh, uh, I think he's framing What channel message. am I? What what channel stream? Close session. Is question it mark? Yeah, yeah. You can close it down. Where I think we're good to go, oh, man. You, you can get set up, and now you can watching. you know relax. <laughs> Thank you also for everyone that's uh, watched um, here today, and you know watch us. Uh, be, this this was an actual physical event that we were doing a presentation of in VR at uh, the Oxford um, Library. So everyone who got to watch today, thank you, because, you know, this could, you know, mean bigger progress for Neos as well as having uh, much more ideas and much more impl implication with something like this. And yeah, we got quite a few people. I the just table. looked at that. That's nice. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, though, um, that's basically kind of like us wrapping up the stream as well, because that was mostly stream, but we're, we are going to be streaming again uh, this coming up Friday. <laughs> as well and you know yeah. if we have any people who don't even know what neos is maybe we even have some people from the university that's first seeing it for the first time you know if you have a vr mm -hmm. headset or thinking about it now even the uh, oculus quest is pretty cheap and you can get that uh, link for it which makes the price of vr really really good and you can come inside of here on your own terms and kind of like check it out because it's really amazing the kind of stuff that you can already build out inside of here and uh, demo out also, thanks for hosting the stream, but we're kind of ending it, so it's like, you know. <laughs> and if anyone, like, I, I should say this too, to kind of like bring it in. Um, if anyone has like any questions or anything about Neos, we also have our Discord. Discord.gg slash NeosVR, and that's where like most of our community is. Yep. As well as we Discord. do have a GitHub too, and a website. That too, Ox. 
And no, no problem, Neos uh, Modic. Yeah, uh, it, it was really awesome to get to be able to record out that presentation. I think that it went, you know, pretty well. And hopefully the people at the event enjoyed it too. Well, we're going to be wrapping up, you guys. I love you all. I hope you have an amazing Wednesday and, you know, be safe, eat some food. No. Drink some water. Especially if you're in front of your headset like me all day. <laughs> Eating some food. Let me get some food. Yeah, uh, there's some nice food. There we go. A nice plate. Thank you to everyone who uh, came in inside of here to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Oh, yep, and Frox linked out the Discord link. There we go. That's how you consume food, right? <laughs> Have a good one, stream. Bye, guys.